All right, I tell you what, let's go back and let's listen to the raw files as they were sent before we put them in the template. Sounds good, right? It's a solid recording. You can tell it's a great recording, but everything's just imported in. It's all right down the middle. No balances, nothing. Now, here's what we did to it, just dragging it on to the template of the first mix signed off on. Let's take a listen. So the question comes often, and it goes something like this. How do you mix an album and keep each song sounding cohesive or like they belong on the same project? The quick answer? Mix templates. Now I say templates, plural, because I start with my master mix template for every mix I do, regardless of the genre I'm mixing. I'll mix the song according to the client's vision and references. We'll go through the full mix revision process and really dive deep into making sure the artist or band absolutely loves the mix. And then, once the first song is signed off on, then and only then, I'll save the session as, call it something like, band name template v1, and then continue to follow my template prep checklist, which we'll be breaking down in this video. Video today. Now in order to get this far, you've got to be able to deliver a mix that the band or artist loves, and one that you can proudly stamp your name on. Many of you are watching because you're trying to figure this whole mixing thing out, while also dealing with average and poor recordings. This is exactly why I created my Fix It In The Mix guide, and I want to give it to you today completely free. Inside you'll discover the essential skills that you've got to learn in order to take average and even poor recordings and deliver radio ready results. We'll look at audio repair, dealing with arrangement issues, drum augmentation, Augmentation, drum augmentation. That's really just a fancy way of saying we're going to be using drum samples. Who's writing these scripts, man? Dealing with terrible vocal recordings and more. Normally 27 bucks, but today it's yours for free. I'll have the link for the Fix It in the Mix guide along with several other resources like my vocal mixing checklist down in the description below. Step one, remove any unused plugins. Now, I say unused plugins, I actually wanna throw a bonus tip there. Uh, if you've got tracks that are frozen, now's the time to unfreeze them, prep the template, and then if you've got resource issues, maybe go ahead and freeze them once you get the other tracks imported in. But uh, unfreeze the tracks, now let's look at removing unused plugins. If we scroll down here, you can see like here for instance, snare level. Uh, this is a song it's been signed off on. I've got plugins that are inactive. That means I didn't use them. We can go ahead and get rid of those. So we're going to go through for all these control hub, uh, different things, the toms. You can see three tracks right there with VMR. Didn't end up using it. We can take those off. We're going to go through for the entire song. Anything that's inactive, we're going to get rid of them. Step two, we're going to delete unused tracks. Now, you'll see here I've got... A, an all drums committed what I did for this song. I've got a little break section. I took a bounce of the entire drum kit and then I went and selected a little section that matched the rhythm of something I was hearing. Long story short, added a bunch of effects, distorted it, and then put it in the song. Well, this all drums track, I don't need it anymore, so we're gonna get rid of it. Now I've saved as, so we're gonna go ahead and delete. We're not just gonna hide it, we're actually gonna delete it. Just like that, we're gonna move throughout the entire song and any tracks that we see that we didn't use, we don't need them, get rid of them. Step three, delete any tracks specific to the first song. Now in this case, I've got a rock song and it was a little more chill in some sections and I know we have some roads and keys and scents. They're in a folder here. I know I'm not gonna probably need my processing for these for the next songs unless you have a song you know roads and it's consistently you've got roads in there or whatever but i know that we don't so for this album project i can go ahead and delete the roads the strings and sometimes those are, are elements that i'll just go ahead and, and mix because they're just pad sounds or whatever it's simple to just kind of get them up in the mix we're not choosing drum samples and cycling through toms and whatever may be those are easy to just kind of get up in the mix, a little EQ, get them going. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove any tracks that we don't need. Step four, remove all automated plugins. So often in a mix, I will go guitars, vocal lines. You'll have certain phrases where the vocalist maybe got a little more throaty or nasally with their delivery. And I'll go in and I'll automate EQ for those certain phrases or lines. So here on my lead vocal level track, you'll see I've got VMR, that's uh, saturation. So that was specific to this song. I can go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, the Pro-Q3 here is boosting 2K at a pretty wide bell there for certain phrases. And if I click here, you'll see that that is only engaged for this last section. Uh, so whatever I did to that last section with automation, I obviously felt like I needed more 2K. Actually, it might be 
the saturation. It's been a minute since I mixed this one. Yep, so that saturation kicks in, and when I did that, I needed to shape the, the tone of the EQ a little bit differently. So this Pro Q, we're gonna get rid of it. The saturation, we're getting rid of it, and we're moving on. Step five, we're gonna get rid of all automation. We'll do a big select here. We're gonna go up, edit in Pro Tools, clear special, and we're gonna clear all automation. We don't need it. The future songs, they're gonna have their own automation. That's the beauty of using a template, getting the song already sounding good with this template, and then writing automation to take it to the finish line. So clear all automation. It's gonna make your job a lot easier. When you get to the next song, you won't have to do it there. It'll already be cleared out in the template. Step six, delete any buses or inactive effects. So I start every mix with the same mix template, my master mix template, and built into that are several effects. We got eighth delays, quarter delays, all these here. I chose not to use them on this song. Now here you're gonna make a judgment call. Do you see yourself pulling these up and using them in the future mixes, then maybe you go ahead and leave them in. You could always import them in and call them up as track presets or import session data in Pro Tools to uh, to pull these back in. For, but for me, if I didn't use them on a, a song, kind of the first single is usually what we like to mix. I'm going to get rid of them, clean it up, and then I know if I need a certain delay or something, we'll call on those track presets in the future mix session. Step seven, labeling. It's going to make your job a lot easier if you go ahead and take the time to go through and label these tracks. Now we've got guitars here and in the heat of the moment, you're mixing a song. It can get kind of sloppy. You're importing new tracks, the band sending you new files, you're trying new things. A lot of times the track is just going to get labeled whatever their original file was. Guitar, space, 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 12, R, I, you know, D, I, octave, whatever. I know that this, these guys right here, they're rhythm guitars. So I'm going to say R guitar L. We're going to go R guitar right and then we've got our guitars one because we have multiple sets. This I know they're octave guitars. So we'll do the same thing. Octave guitar L, octave guitar R, and then octave guitars. And we'll make our way through and I'll be super anal with this. I'm going to go through and make sure everything is labeled exactly as I want it to be so that when we get into the next session, it all makes sense. I know where to drag the raw tracks onto the template and we're moving on. All right, next up, step eight, drum samples. I gotta be honest, I usually start my template prep with dealing with the drums. I'll go ahead and do this first before anything I've shared with you, but for some reason I had this down on my list. Basically, you have two options when it comes to um, setting up your drums for the template. You could, option one, just leave everything in there. You can see here, I've got them frozen right now, but DG Kick 1, this kick drum is heavily processed. I've got uh, a couple of samples blended. I've got EQ, compression, saturation, more EQ, more EQ, more EQ. The uh, Pro MB is automated for some, some different stuff. And then we got two more EQ. I think that last EQ I actually ended up taking out and putting a gate. Uh, this is a little bit older session. But needless to say, we've got a lot of processing here. You could say you want to keep that and you want to be able to tweak it, deal with it in the next session. Maybe from song to song, you want to adjust your compression settings or your EQ. For me in this particular session, I knew that I could actually go ahead and take advantage of option two, which is commit those sounds and create custom drum samples. So I did, I created custom one shots for this song where uh, I processed these uh, plugins and uh, created a one shot. In this case, this genre, hard rock, just kind of pushing the, the, the song forward. I don't need a bunch of dynamics in it. So I just created one shots. I've got a kick one shot. I got, uh, for my snare, I had a snare top. See the labeling was all jacked up. Uh, uh, I have followed this step for the official session, but I pulled this up as this was the end final mix session that the, the band signed off on. So I wanted to use it as an example for you guys, but we have a snare top, we have a snare ambient, and we have a snare chamber in this session. And so once it's all cleaned up, you can see this is a snare top, snare, whatever. And then um, I committed them and created one shots so that in the next session, I'll show you that here in a minute, you could just pull open and have everything nice and clean. And just like that, the power of editing, we have this session loaded and you can clearly see all that kick processing is now simply trigger with my new one shot. 
and that's that. So kick, snare, everything is just simply trigger now. Those sounds have been processed, committed, and then I've pulled them in, and then what I do is I A, B, it's not in here right now, but I pull open the, the track that has all the processing, and I'll click back and forth between this new trigger track, and I'll go and listen to one, then the other, and I'll make sure that they sound exactly the same. I'll match the volume, and, uh, and then we're moving on. One last thing on drum samples. Now, you may not have a song where a one-shot is appropriate. You may need the dynamics or the velocity of multi-layered hits. And if you have that situation, it depends on the project and the budget. I've had many cases where it made sense to go ahead and create custom TCI files if you're using Slate Digital's Trigger 2, uh, excuse me, Steven Slate Drums Trigger 2, uh, then it could make sense for you to go ahead and create custom TCI files. They've got an app for you to download and take care of that whole process. Other times it may just make sense to leave the files, import all the processing, and then tweak them for that next song, and then commit them, freeze them, whatever you need to do then. But either way, one more note about drum samples. Let's move on. Step nine, gain staging. Now this is probably the most important step because this is what it's going to set the stage for your mix template to actually even work with the new songs. You got to be able to gain stage them the same as what your final mix has been gain staged. So you can see I moved these plugins. We're going to use a snare trigger stereo as a, uh, as a demo here. I've moved them down one slot and I'm going to come in here and insert the Pro Tools trim. Now whatever DAW you're in, you may not need this step. Your DAW may already give you the input. Uh, meter level of what's coming in the signal before it hits any plugins uh, but us Pro Tools guys we got to load the trim tool so the other step we're going to come up here to go to view edit window views and view the comments now if you don't have this feature in your DAW most probably do you can just use a note taking app use Apple Notes whatever jot it down on your phone kick minus six whatever we're going to write down the peak of all of the individual tracks and it seems a little tedious it goes quick and we're gonna take note of the highest section. Uh, if you got a song with a very dynamic low section, you may write low and then whatever it's hitting at. Let's see this section for example. Now this is not the level after trigger. This is the level before any plugin inserts. So let's take a look and see what this snare's given us. I mean, it's showing everything here. But I see on the meter, we've got minus 12. So what I would do is write down minus 12 peak, and then I know, and then I'm gonna come out here to a little hotter section. Still minus 12. Pretty consistently that snare is hitting at minus 12. So now I've written minus 12 peak. What do you think we're gonna do when we save this template as, and we go to import for a new song? We're gonna go to the snare, we're gonna drag the files down to the snare trigger ST. It was labeled something better whenever I did my labeling, but again, using this as an example. And we're gonna use clip gain. Let's say this is a song. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna drag with clip gain and set the volume until it sits at minus 12 on our trim plug in here. Now, we're done. That snare is gonna sound mixed. It's gonna follow that trigger sample, however you've mixed it. And so that's the process. We're gonna use our gain staging Take note of wherever that's hitting on here. Now, if you've got, let's do one more. Let's do maybe the bass. So we'll come down here and look. We've got multiple bass tracks here. So bass DI. Same thing. We're going to pull these down one slot. Now, if that happens, you're screwed in Pro Tools. You got to start over. But for example's sake, we're going to move on. I'm not going to save that. You come in here, same thing. We're going to add trim. Sucks that undo doesn't work for a plugin that you accidentally drag on top of another plugin. We got trim. We've added it. We're going to take a look. And I'm going to look at this base and see. I mean, it's pretty consistent. So we're going to come in here and hit play. Around minus six. Let's go out here with a little, little more. So some of those peaks hit minus two. That's okay. What's the average hitting though? Minus six-ish. This is not an exact science. So you can see some sections are minus six, and then you have some other sections where there will be some peaks at like minus three. So what I might write here is minus six average, and then but some peaks up around minus three-ish. And then I know whenever I import the bass, I'm gonna try to get it in that sweet spot of between minus six, where it's kind of chucking along. And then if I have any peaks that go higher, I know that I'm in the ballpark. It's really just about getting it in the ballpark and then tweaking and using your ears on every mix thereafter. Something I mentioned 
is you using this to have that cohesive sound but where this isn't going to be very much help is say you got a hip-hop project or pop project and every single song one song has live drums the next doesn't it's not going to be very useful for that maybe for the the lead vocal to kind of have a starting point uh, but if you've got different production tracks different kicks different snares different synths and that kind of thing the vocal mix is going to change quite a bit too there so that's where having just a, a master mix template will really come in handy but this is going to i mean pfft, saves an insane amount of time i mix a lot of gospel and live gospel and you get these 15 minute songs where pfft, i just pull them into the template and get them all placed on the template and you're in the ballpark right otherwise we'd be mixing all those from scratch that would be a nightmare so uh once you've completed these steps it's time to save your template we're going to take a look at that we're going to give it a name so it, let's say we had this template we're ready we're going to come over here i would save as first and then i'm going to save as a template and this band is Navigate. Shout out to my man, Justin Nice, for letting me use this song in this video. Uh, we're actually going to be featuring this song, this band, inside of the Mix Academy VIP. Link in the description. Definitely check that out. But Navigate, uh, we'll call this Master Template V1. And then uh, that's that. We're going to save it. I've already done that. Next, we're going to go to the next song we're going to create new song we'll call it um navigate the song is called everything is the next one we're mixing and we're going to call this i'd label it dg mix and then what we're going to do is go to our template we created and scroll down navigate master mix i'm goofed pro tools if i don't let me copy that when i click here it's going to change the name to the name of the template then we're going to label it there we go and check our settings we're good i'm going to put that in the correct folder there we go. All right, so we've got ourselves a new session. It's nice and clean. This is the uh, the session that I actually worked through and labeled and got everything looking great. You can see it's much cleaner than that mess that we were just looking at. And uh, the next step is we're going to import those new tracks. And I'm going to go ahead and put everything in place. And then we'll take a look. And I'll come back and see you here in a second. <laughs> Now that everything's in place, we're going to go track by track and set the gain staging to exactly what we set over here in the comments from the last session. So I've gone ahead, I've done the kick, uh, minus six P, gone through, done some of these, let's do a couple of them together. So let's go ahead and pull open the base DI. Let's see where it's at. We got a ways to go, so we're going to pull this up until it's at minus two. Remember, this is for a finished mix. This was my gain staging, client signed off on that. It's not the time to go second guess. Oh, we were a little too hot, a little, and we didn't have enough gain, or we had way too much gain. None of that. We're just dealing with drag, put this in place, and then we're going to use our ears ultimately to take the mix of the finish line. But this should get us in the ballpark of what the band signed off on. So let's hit play, and we'll get that up to minus two peak. <laughs> Maybe a little hotter than it needs to be. We'll pull it back a little bit. And then again, we're going to use our ears. The next one was minus two. It's the same track. And then we have, again, minus two. So, all right, now let's take a listen to our bass with no processing. And with processing. Big difference, and we didn't have to do anything to get there. So there's an example we're going to go through. Let's do one more together. I think I was at the hat when I was off camera. Let's go to the hat. I'm going to come here to the trim. And this one I've noted minus 7-ish when it's closed, but it hits minus 3 when it's open. Those are open. Semi-open. Somewhere in there. Let's find a closed section. There's closed. Kind of meeting in the middle. So quick judgment call and we're moving on. I'm not going to sit here for days. It's not a perfect science. We're just going to get it in the ballpark. We're moving on. Let's do one more. We'll do the overheads. Let's go. So we need to get this one to minus six peak. That's a snare hit, yeah. Come out here. 
we're happy, we're good, and we're moving on. So we're going to do this process for the entire song. All right, everything looks pretty good. Let's go back and let's check out what these raw files sounded like when we first imported them in. This is the new song using the template. Obviously, these are DI guitars, so nothing to write home about, but drums, great recordings, just everything's in and just mono and chaotic. Now let's come down, and this is just with putting everything in its place from the template, the first mix. As you can clearly hear, we've gone from zero to hero with just a matter of using the template. Again, once that band signs off on that song, that's when you go and you create this template and you're moving on. So as you can see, it's not bad. Once you get through it a few times, it'll be cake. You'll be moving through it or you can do what I do and hire an assistant to handle this process for you and get all the subsequent songs ready into their own template. And then you get in hands on with the creative stuff, automation and all that specific to each song. Well, hey, if you want to find out what makes your favorite mixers mixes jump out of the speakers, then click over here where I'm going to show you exactly how to reverse engineer your favorite mixes using nothing but stock plugins. I'll see you over there.